everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of the hot mic here on the outlaw nation channel i am the outlaw john roca here joined as always by the insider uh, who's got a nice little uh i don't know green uh sweater there what's going on is it hot in la how are you man how are things <laughs> jeff snyder this is johnny boy good to see you you too my man Happy i never Thursday. know what we're leading up to how are you feeling how are things how's your body how are, how, how's your mind how are you man i'm good i mean my my mind is a little mush i've been grinding all week and, and mm. i may take the day off i don't know that there was that there's going to be a newsletter tonight you mean um, tonight oh you mean tonight gotcha yeah gotcha. i may take okay. the day off uh, <laughs> so but you know what we have some fun today, baby. Yeah, we're here for the hot mic for sure. We got so much to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for everybody who's joining us right off the bat. Remember, the stream labs and super chats are open, so send in your love. You already see some super chats that have come in here, but send in your love. Stream labs address right above Jeff's head, and it's also pinned in the description and in the uh, in the chat in just a second. But all of this is just to let you know this is the way you kind of support the show and everything we got going on. We got so much we're getting into, so much we're going to talk about for sure, and we want to hear your questions, thoughts, and comments as well we go along so thank you very much for joining us it's hot uh, in uh, southern california today i'm sweating like a motherfucker so if you hear my fan going it's because i'm trying to stay cool in this uh in this weather so all right let's central air johnny uh yeah, oh I should, oh shit i forgot about that oh, we yeah, just I installed see. that last year i totally forgot about that i should turn on the air thank you jeff Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. Always look it out. Um, all right, brother, let's jump into the first story here. I sent this to you uh, earlier, and we should just jump and we should just get it out of the way. Let's talk about this. Aaron, jo Aaron Taylor Johnson, there are rumors heating up, and I know we talked about it on the show weeks ago, or if not months ago, um, about the possibility of him taking on the role of James Bond. Well, the son. Over there in England, you know, I know that's the rival to the the, the uh, outlet you worked for, the newspaper you worked for for a week. Uh, they uh, released reports here that uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson it does apparently have an offer in front of him to play the role of James Bond. This is a little bit further on the story than just the considering him. This seems that it's a possibility here. Uh, however, according to E News, uh, their source with knowledge of the situation says that Taylor Johnson has not been offered the Bond role, but while they may not be an official offer on the table, he teases that, quote, the opportunity may be in front of Aaron soon. And Aaron is playing coy with it right now. What 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 are your thoughts on this when you hear this story, brother? Oh, okay. <laughs> is he calling? Is he talking to Aaron Taylor Johnson? I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll find out when he when he comes back on. <laughs> Well, this is part of the game, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, yeah, Aaron Taylor Johnson, this is a very real possibility that it's apparently happening here. Remember, Aaron Taylor Johnson has uh, um, a Craven about to come out. He's got the Fall Guy. He's about to come out. He plays the main actor in the Fall Guy. Who the Fall Guy is, the stunt double for Ryan Gosling's character here. We saw him in Age of Ultron as well. Uh, and, of course, Kick-Ass. Um, and, you know, if it is Aaron Taylor Johnson, it would still fit within what we've gotten before. Uh, when Sean Connery came on as the first Bond, he'd only appeared in a series of minor TV films. You could argue that Pierce Brosnan was probably the most famous person to become James Bond. Roger Moore wasn't that well-known. Daniel Craig wasn't that well-known. Um, Sorry about that. No worries. Timothy Dalton wasn't that well-known. Uh, but this may be fitting the pattern of Aaron Taylor Johnson possibly being James Bond. So, Jeff, now that you're on the phone, your thoughts here. Do you think this is possible? Do you think this is true? I don't. I don't see what's changed. Well, Nothing has changed. On the table. Do you think? Do, isn't that a step further, or am I misreading that? It would be a step further if there's an offer on the table. Yeah. I mean, it's the sun. <laughs> right, but E News said that although the story's not a, the story's not a hundred percent true. They think that there might be a ta uh, an offer on the table very soon. So seems to be leaning towards the possibility of it happening a little bit more. I mean, guys, what what are we talking about here? The Sun and E News. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> okay, all yeah. right. <laughs> you on. give it no credibility. Zero, <laughs> okay. zero, zero credibility. So what? Wh let me ask you this then. What behooves us? 
a site like the sun or a publication like why do that is it a slow news day is it they just need a little more clicks more attention do they think do, is there some credibility or like, I, I wouldn't know because the sun is not a real news organization okay all right fair right, right. i mean but like their, their standards are totally different yeah Okay. I mean, fair. What it, what is the process there, and what is their track record, and and forget the Sun as an organization, but what is that reporter's track record? Yeah, yeah. probably nil. Fair right. point. Fair point. Uh, but uh, I mean, this was carried by some publications, like Time Magazine carried this story yesterday. Time Magazine is not the Time Magazine that you and I grew up on. Time okay. Magazine is a trash fire right now. So, well, I didn't know that. Okay, fair point. Oh yeah. For sure. Okay. At least it's it's online operation. Right. I mean, yeah. Okay. I don't even, is there still a print operation? I don't know if there's, I, I, I guess I do see the Time Magazine when I hit up Barnes & Noble every once in a while. So they are still making those, I think, in hard copy. Uh, but Rolling Stone UK had an interview with him recently um, uh, for promoting Craven the Hunter. And uh, they, they quoted it as, or they described it as him answering the question about James Bond. I uh, was saying I can only really talk about things I'm going to show and tell. I feel like whatever's drawn out for me, I can uh, effing do better. And then he answered the question with a wry smile on his, on his it's face. It's not so, that there's no truth. It's, it's not okay. that it's not true that he's been the front runner for, I mean, probably since the day Daniel Craig said goodbye to the role, right? Okay. Yeah. His, Noel's, his name sort of surfaced very quickly. Yes. Um, I just don't know that there's like an actual offer out on the table. And I don't think that the sun would be reporting on that offer. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Fair point. Fair point. You know, people said that about the hot mic initially, like who's the hot mic? What's the hot mic? No. And then all no one time. said that. No one said that because <laughs> I was here. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, I just, um, I think maybe it is Aaron Taylor Johnson. I think he'd make a good bond. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know what has changed other than Aaron Taylor Johnson now has to make the press rounds for for uh, the fall guy. Yeah. Do you think this is planted by Aaron Taylor Johnson's PR team? Ah, because he's in the middle of doing press rounds. This is a way of maybe no. getting people to ask him about it, which kind of pushes the um, possibility over the line here for him. Do you think there's any kind of that kind of machinations going on. Behind I think the there's literally nothing going on, which is why okay. he can do the whole like, Oh, I don't know. Am I? And smile. And like, gotcha. yeah, I would lean into it and play it up if people think you are bond, but right. I don't think his team is out there planning that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and they certainly wouldn't plant it in the sun, which is not a reliable publication to begin <laughs> with. So yeah, yeah, I just, again, I, I think this is a total non story and it's okay. just every few weeks or every month it's, Oh, so-and-so is going to be bond. Oh, so-and-so is going to be bond. Like you'll hear it from either deadline or, I mean, probably deadline. Yeah. I mean, now, people... that, now that Baz is a deadline, cause Baz was the only UK reporter who I thought had mm. a chance to break this kind of stuff. And now he's yeah. a deadline. So, um, do you feel like this? He's the odds-on favorite. Is that why there's always yeah. smoke around him? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. So. I do think he's the odds-on favorite. Sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. I just right. I, again, I just don't know what has changed. Fair point. Well, just that they're saying that there might be an offer here, but you're saying you don't believe it. So I respect that. Um, all right. Let's move on to another thing here. Let's talk about something in the world of horror here, Jeff. Something you're very uh, um, well aware of. We got the first teaser trailer for Fede Alvarez's Alien Romulus here that dropped earlier this week. This one very much having shades of the original Alien film from Ridley Scott. Uh, hearing sounds of uh, people dying on ships, seeing uh, bloody walls, seeing the face huggers, uh, and then eventually... Uh, seeing um, uh, Kaylee Spaney there and Isabella Merced being part of this thing. So what did you think? I mean, this is sets. They said this is, or uh, Fede Alvarez said this is set between Alien and Aliens. I think he said like 20 years after Alien, there in between. It's supposed to be its own story and not necessarily connect up to the overall canon of Alien. But what did you think of this one minute teaser that we got? I mean, I think it looks good, uh, but at the and I've heard good things about it. I've heard okay. that the movie works, but at the same time, I've seen it before. I've seen it look just like every other fucking alien movie, with the same creatures, and I get that it's not like some new world, right? This has right. to fit in between Alien and Alien, so it's not like the tech could be completely different, mm -hmm. or you know, like the designs are going to be roughly the same. Um, but yeah, it just felt a little familiar to me. Uh, other than like now the face huggers, they seem a little bit quicker. Yeah. Different color as well. 
I mean, it was hard to see anything in that trailer. <laughs> but do you like the fact that they're setting this at this time? Like, you know, Prey was so successful because it was set in a completely different time on Earth and uh, dealing with... Right, and I would have liked to have seen the alien approach to that, like at a mm. different time in a different place or something. But it just kind of seems like more of the same that we've already seen. Yeah, okay. So you came away... Without uh, with any, did you come up with any feeling about it, positive or negative at all? Just that I it think it'll be cool. mean. It'll be nasty. I like. I, I'm okay. looking forward to it because I like Fede Alvarez, and yeah. you know, I, I don't mean this in the way you guys are going to take it to mean. Fede Alvarez, like myself, like David Fincher, is a pervert. I mean, you I, can you, you can see that in the filmmaking. Okay. Um, and I I like that. I like the idea of a pervert making an alien movie. Now, do you mean that in a way that he enjoys the blood of it all and the horror of it all? Or do you mean that uh, kind of peeking in, peering in, that kind of thing, and not being able to stop? No, it I mean it's blood? like I mean it very, it's like sexually. Like, oh, okay. The, the you, you don't hold on the semen dripping off of the the turkey baster in "Don't Breathe," right? Yeah. You don't. There's no need to sh to show that kind of stuff unless you're a pervert. Fair point. Um, oh, okay. So. You know, and I mean that as a compliment to him. I, like, right. I, again, I, I understand the, the way that people may uh, take that word, but yeah. um, there's not necessarily a negative con connotation to the word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Adam says alien has to have a sexual element, to be fair. I don't... I, yeah. I kind of agree. I, I know. I think I know what he's getting at with that. I think I, I know mean, what he's getting at. I know it was a big deal in 79 Sigourney in her bra and panties or short shirt and panties. I know that was sexual or attractive or whatever. It was meant for the young boys there, but like some of them but i don't remember any of that in aliens what's the image the, what's the image that you remember most from that teaser uh from the teaser the blood on the walls for romulus okay yeah for me it was very much the thing either coming i think it was coming out of someone's mouth oh right, right. It was like yeah. that thing. and that that's the sexual element that i think i'm talking about interesting okay all right uh, all right. Well, you know, that's that's what you take from it. I can't argue that. Um, Even just the way the teeth, the alien's teeth, I mean, it's a very phallic-shaped head and, and, and mm. design, but the way that the teeth sort of come out and strike, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that there's a sexual element there. And, you know, I, I don't know if you know about, like, the big scene like the you know have we talked about it on this on this podcast i don't know if we have what big scene are you talking about Could you be in right? romulus like the twist on the chest burster uh no they're gonna be bursting a part of the body oh that's, that's not where the chest is Oof! yikes yeah. okay well you talk about perverted i guess that's that is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, and and an ass burster scene. Yes. Oh, all right. That's sounds like my Friday nights uh, after a few tacos. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's move. But let me ask you one last thing about this before we move on, though. Do you? I know you were saying uh, that you didn't see anything new in this, but do you feel like this is not going to be one of these underwhelming installments? In my opinion recently from the Ridley Scott point of view, because he said that he got notes from Ridley and James Cameron and that they were different notes. Each of them gave him different notes and he kind of incorporated the notes that he could incorporate into his approach to this. So did you, uh, do you like that he was getting advice here? Do you like that? That's, does that make you feel more comfortable that we're going to get maybe a better installment than we've got? Yeah, I think you have to seek out Ridley Scott. I mean, he's the producer on the movie, so it was only natural that he was going to get, you know, way true. And very true. And give notes. Cameron's obviously not involved with this movie. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, if you can get in touch with him, like, and you respect what he did with it, of mm -hmm. course you want him to weigh in on, on the cut or whatever. Um, you know, I, I just don't like when people are like, oh, you know, Ridley Scott saw it and, and James Cameron saw it and they liked it and they're tough mm -hmm. critics. Like, what do we, again, what do we expect these guys to say? That they oh, yeah. didn't like it? Like, <laughs> they, they all have a movie to sell. They all have a franchise to sell. True. They're invested in selling. Come James on. Cameron's been really positive about every Terminator installment. Yeah. Since, yeah so, yeah, no, so, I agree. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I didn't mind the Ridley Scott movies, Prometheus and Covenant. I really okay. liked Fastbender's David in them. Um, yeah. They're not, I mean, yeah, I don't think they were like bad movies. They're just like a little heady. I think that this is going to be a return to like the nitty gritty. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Uh, like a smaller story in a way similar to prey but not in the style in terms of being at a different time but certainly a more condensed story 
a smaller you know, we, we don't need the mythologizing and who are the engineers and yeah, you know, yeah. what does this statue mean and no we you just want to see an alien fucking take out people one by one <laughs> exactly i've never understood the desire to go through that um all right let's keep going here jeff uh let's move on to your story oh no this story about margot robbie and the sims i know you talked about this in your newsletter i saw it in other places as well um this is apparently happening margot robbie uh, is uh, apparently the Sims are heading to a big to the big screen, and Kate Heron is a big part of making this happen. If those you don't know, Kate Heron directed season one of Loki. She's attached to tackle this adaptation. She'll co-write it with uh, Brioni Redman and Lucky Chat, the production company run by Margot Robbie, um, will produce the feature uh, uh, and be a part of this thing. So, do, does this make it feel like Margot Robbie is going to maybe appear in this, or is she kind of done translating? video games toys into live action uh, with herself per, uh, acting in it. What, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, if I had to guess, um, she would just produce hmm. because I think if they're trying to sell this package, then you know, like, you know, if she was planning to star, they would have just sort of said that, yeah. right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Sort of, you know, help juice the package. I, I think she's just producing because it's a good business move. Right. And because hmm. her company has, now establish a track record as far as taking these yeah those, you know things where oh what what would the story be here and, and turning into you know something special and this wow. was a pop culture sort of phenomenon this story was huge it did yeah. absolute gangbusters it, was, it lit up the internet uh yesterday i could tell yeah um and like i never played the sims yeah but like i watched in college my roommate lost a year of his life playing that wow game. wow oh, yeah yeah, it's like Warcraft, World of Warcraft. People get super intense uh, playing The Sims and playing World of Warcraft about their characters, about the things that they're building. So this is a fascinating decision to go this route uh, and bring this to life. I mean, it's it's a built-in fan base because it's massive. As you said, it got a great big response on social media yesterday. So do we see this as... Do we see, like, well, we're going to talk about AI in a little bit, but is this where AI plays a role in something like this? Is this a way that they maybe can use AI in a film like this? It would seem to make sense with something like The Sims, uh, or am I off base on this? I mean, I have, again, no idea. Hmm. I, I, I have no clue what, what the approach would be other than it's going to be live action, not not animated. I mean, to me, it strikes me as like, my, like the Minecraft movie. Hmm. Um, a little bit, uh, which is another game I, I never really grew up playing. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's just like a good piece of business. Like mm. video game movies are starting to work really well now. I mean, Super yeah. Mario did great. Uh, Uncharted did all right. Uh, Sonic led to a trilogy, you know, like so. Um, I think that that a deep pocketed streamer is going to end up getting oh. this package, right? Okay. CA is shopping it around. There's no yeah, studio yeah, yeah. attached yet. Um, will Warner Brothers make a play for it? I mean, as the studio behind Barbie and, and Minecraft, they could, uh, but they've also been shelling out a lot lately. So I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if this ended up going to like an Amazon or an Apple or something like that. Wow. Wow. Uh, do you like uh, Kate Heron being on to be the writer of this one or the co-writer on this one? Yeah, I think it, this, uh, this kind of movie makes more sense, right? Um, mm -hmm. Based on what she did with Loki this movie makes more sense to me than like Supergirl would for her. Mm. And it doesn't necessarily take her out of the running for Supergirl. Right, right, right. Um, I just don't, you know, I don't know if whoever buys this property is going to want to like fast track it or whatever. I don't know if there's a script already or if Kate yeah. would have to write it with Brioni Redman. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like this fits her sensibility as a, as a director. Yeah. Yeah, and The Sims, for people who don't know, The Sims, you know, this game around, came around, I think, in around the year 2000, but there's no, like, you play the characters. You put them through the things they're going through. There's no storyline that you're necessarily following with The Sims. You're just building out this world, and then you're acting however you want, and you're working with other people who are part of it as well. So it could be interesting commentary on Avatar, on the idea of controlling a character, what happens when the character starts to become sentient, what do you do in that situation? So there's a lot of avenues you can go on in this situation. Maybe a little bit like Stranger Than Fiction, that Will Ferrell movie, where you're having someone kind of talk to you and you're hearing a voice as you're trying to live your life. What does that mean? You know, and find out that what is the God voice or even the Lego movie, which Will was a part of as well. So it could be interesting. Um, I like it, 
though, Jeff, as you said, we're seeing more and more of these video games or these, um, uh, yeah, or apps or whatever you want to call them, because turning into live action movies that work. And so could be interesting to see what more we got. Um, all right, let's, uh, yeah, like Free Guy. Yeah, great point. Uh, just like Free Guy. That was kind of a, a, an interesting film but done in that in that vein as well. Um, all right, let's move on. I got to ask you about this one, Jeff. Um, Michael Mann has, I don't know how you feel about Radio France as opposed to The Sun, but Michael Mann has confirmed to Radio France that not only is the sequel to 1995's Heat his next film, he is already deep in pre-production mode for this project. He wants to shoot the film this year and was finishing up the script for work, which serves as both a prequel and a sequel to the originally to the original film. He told the Economic Times that he that this is definitely his next film, uh, and that he is trying to start in the summer of this year. And the events are going to jump between 1988 and 2000, and then seven years before and five years after the events of 1995 in the film's uh, Los Angeles setting from. From Heat. So Adam Driver is supposed to be taking on this role of uh, Neil McCauley, Austin Butler, and Anna Darmus are rumored for roles. So I know you said a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago, like, I don't want this to be his next film. Well, it seems like it's going to be his next film. Your thoughts? I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think it's a great idea just to begin with. Like, did, okay. I read the book. I yeah. The book was okay. Um, but yeah, it just seems like a no win, right? Like, you know, whatever happens with this movie, it's going to pale in comparison to the original. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's putting any of these young actors in a position to succeed, comparing them to two of the, the greatest of all time. Um, yeah. that's a great point. Yeah. And I just think Michael Mann has lost his fastball and, I'm not sure it's coming back just because this is a follow up to heat. Um, and I don't know who's stepping up to finance this movie because no one has announced that they're making it. Have they? Uh, no, not that I know of because he's still not, he still hasn't officially come out on his social media channels and says, and said, this is happening, but we're hearing this from interviews here with Ra uh, radio France and with, uh, and other, and the, the economic times. So it's interesting. Well, places. I mean, uh... <laughs> I'm sure he's planning heat too and would like to yeah. shoot it this summer or this fall. Um, That's shocking. So quickly, man. I, I just don't know. Is he going to get the budget that he wants? I mean, Ferrari did not do well. It did horrible. Yeah. Financially I mean, he, and critically. He's, yeah. he, he's on a cold streak. And yeah, so yeah. it's like, is this because it's heat? Yeah. Like, are people going to step up? Like or or or, or and maybe because of the cast. Like if he gets Austin, if Austin Butler is in fact playing Chris, right. that's a lot easier to finance, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, I just I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not as gung ho and, and as psyched about it as everybody else. It feels like a a bad yeah. idea. Yeah, some people live in the time period when a film came out and kind of excuse or forget the subsequent years, and so like this came out, Jeff. This came out in 95, almost 30 years ago. It's kind of crazy to think about. And so now you're going to go back and grab these young actors to be a part of it. Now, something similar could be Tim Burton, right? I mean, his track record was pretty bad feature film wise over the last few years. But then Wednesday comes out and people are back on the Tim Burton train. And we're going to talk about him in just a second. But do you think that maybe people might have a bit more faith because Michael Mann is going back to a world that he knows and and solidified so well back in 1995 that maybe some purse strings will be loosened because they have more faith that it's not a new thing or a or um uh, something set back in the Middle Ages or something set back in the 50s in Italy that this will be something people can connect to overall. I mean, this is the thing. It's a Warner Brothers title. I don't know if Warner Brothers actually has the rights or not, or if it's like mm. a new re new Regency thing, right? Because re I think Regency financed Heat. Right. Um, I mean, it's so hard to say with the way Warner Brothers is spending money these days. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because it's like a lot True. of people speculate, like with this Ryan Johnson deal. I had someone text me and be like, I will bet you dinner anywhere you want that Ryan Johnson doesn't direct either of these movies. Right. They announced that this week. Either, right. Either movies. of his two picture movies. Um, and that it's all just like, you know, basically what DeLuca and Abdi were doing when they were at MGM, which is winning all these auctions and buying all these hot packages, knowing full well, they'll, they'll never have to make them. 
right? <laughs> Someone else will have to pay for them. Well, what's the point of winning them then? If is it just for it, status? Because no, it's to make them look more attractive for a sale, right? MGM oh, looked more oh, attractive uh, for a sale. Not you're, you're getting Bond, and yeah, you're paying for the library, but it's like you're also getting all the projects that they had in development, right? Right, and now which includes like Project Hail Mary, right? A, a Gosling <sighs> movie. So it's like, you know, is that what they're doing at Warner Brothers? Is bringing in Coogler and Leo and Cruz and all these guys so that Universal will be like, oh shit, look at Warner Brothers Slate. Like, we're not just buying the library and everything. Look at all these projects that we're getting too. Yeah, okay. That's so weird to me because when studios buy other studios, they want to bring their people in uh, from their studio to be in charge of these projects. And if these projects are already in motion, just seems to conflict with this idea of taking over a studio. But, you know, maybe it's Maybe, as you said, it makes them look attractive. Maybe they can make some money off of this when they do the purchase. But well, all right, we'll see. We'll see. I, I, I can yeah. heat too. I mean, are you, is this something you're pumped for? Listen, uh, uh, we did, of course, we we both love that movie and we did a great commentary track, I think, uh, for yeah. a lot of years ago. Um, I do love the movie. It's not without its faults, okay? But I do love the movie. Like, I didn't like the Natalie Borman story. Did you read that. Heat too? I did. I it got better as it went along, but then I put it down halfway through. So I still haven't finished it. So that tells me, like, I don't think it's as strong of a story as people think. But it doesn't really work as a book. Like as a yeah. movie, it may be a different thing, but as yeah. a book, it didn't quite work. Maybe the jumping around works better in a movie type of situation as we've seen it work. But my concern is this, man. He's long in the tooth, bro. And I know it's not about ageism or maybe a little bit of ageism. And I'm okay to say it. You can come at me if you want. But Heat is like virile. That film is virile. That is a 12-inch cock swinging from a strong, muscular man's body. And I'm looking at a almost 80-year-old, I don't know how, I think he's in his 70s, Michael Mann. And I watched that Ferrari and it was flaccid. I did enjoy The Last Duel, but it wasn't as virile as I've seen other things. So my concern is, will he capture the young man's manhood of these characters effectively to get that across? And I don't think that he will. And so I have concerns about him directing this film. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think I'm wrong? Do you no. Think I'm wrong? No, I have the same concerns. I Again, yeah. yeah. I think he had a heater uh, with Manhunter, Last of the Mohicans, yeah. uh, Heat, and Insider. And that's since then, I don't know. That's just, that's Michael Mann's prime. Every director has a prime. I mean, Scorsese, Spielberg, those are the rarities. But all a lot of great directors have a prime. And after that prime, it's a law of diminishing returns. John McTiernan looked like he was going to be directing fucking balls out awesome films for the rest of his career. And it went poof. Walter Hill it happens and so uh, i'm not michael mann and ridley scott to me are kind of two peas in the same pod you never know what you're gonna get but i think you've gotten consistently better stuff from ridley than you have from michael and so my concern going forward is will he be able to grab that and capture it you know so we'll see no, uh, just just remember that these yeah. directors like patty jenkins last week can say anything in these in these True. interviews yeah he's 80 People are arguing about voting for a president that's in his 80s. And we're going to be okay with an 80-year-old directing a Heat 2? I don't know, man. I just don't buy it. Um, all right. Anyway, let's um, let's take a break here as we're almost at a 30-minute mark. And when we come back, we'll jump into some more stories. Keep sending in your Streamlabs and Super Chats here, ladies and gentlemen. We want to hear from you all uh, and your questions, thoughts, and comments uh, as we go along. And However long Jeff can hold on, we'll go on with the show. We'll go on with the show. But let's take a break real quick, real quick, and we'll be right back right after this. All right. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, hit the wrong button there. All right. We got 500 of you joining us live. Thank you so much for joining us here uh, on the Outlaw Nation channel. Please remember to subscribe to the channel down below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel before, subscribe, hit that bell button, leave your comments uh, if you're watching this later on. If you want to send some support, hit that thanks button uh, if you're uh, watching us after we've done live and send some support. And Jeff, where can they find all your news uh, that you drop every day on your newsletter, brother? Uh, except for maybe today, uh, the, the insider.com. Thank you so much, Johnny. 
No, of course, brother. Um, all right, let's move on to something else. Speaking of something that's been 30 <laughs> years in the making, 30 plus years in the making, uh, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, uh, the teaser trailer dropped today, brother, giving our first, giving us our first look of Michael Keaton back in the Beetlejuice garb. Winona Ryder, uh, Catherine O'Hara being a part of this uh, trailer as well. And of course, Jenna Ortega leading the way as the main character in this particular story. Uh, the stills were dropped yesterday that also included Justin Thoreau in this one. And uh, we're going to get Monica Bellucci as Beetlejuice's wife. Willem Dafoe is going to be in this one as well. Um, so uh, quite a lot of people involved in this one, both new and returning. I know it was only a minute and 15 seconds and the juice was loose. What did you think of this particular teaser trailer, my man? Damn! <laughs> um... I thought it was okay, although what did you think of the juice is loose? I love this. It's a good line. What are you talking about? It's not a bad line, but I kind of just wanted him to say Shota. <laughs> that was like the line I was waiting for him to say. And then he went with the juice is loose. And I was like, oh, okay, that's not bad. But it also conjures like OJ to me. Uh, yeah, I was thinking that too. I actually almost said that. I did my trailer reaction before we did our show here today, and I almost said there's a connotation to that that feels like OJ. So, do you want to hear that uh, in this situation? But he is a bad guy. Look, as much as we love Beetlejuice as a character, he is an evil dude. Okay, so he would absolutely—he's not murder your wife. Evil. I don't, I don't know what he is. He was trying to. I just don't like what. What would have been the problem for him to just say it's showtime? Yeah. Well. I think they wanted something more menacing, you know, because the look on his face is pretty menacing. And the horror look on Winona Ryder's face, on Lydia's face, is uh, super scared. So. I would have played into the, the nostalgia with the line and everything for the mm. teaser. And I would have saved the juices loose. Like, that is a good line, but yeah. I would have saved it for somewhere else in the movie. Okay. One thing I pointed out watching the teaser trailer, what are your thoughts on the The town looks like it hasn't changed at all, and it's been 36 years. Do you These think small towns in, in Maine or whatever don't? They, they just, <laughs> don't? yeah. Okay, all right. I, just I, I liked that it immediately, like, you, I recognized, like, that red barn type yeah. structure yeah, over the, the bridge. bridge and everything, yeah. 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 Um, I, I thought it was cool. Um, I've heard, so I've heard some stuff about this movie. I've heard it's pretty good. Okay, yes. And I've heard that Willem Dafoe is like the standout in it. Can I tell you that I rewatched Poor Things yesterday? I do like that movie, Jeff. And he is so good in that film. The more Willem Dafoe, the better. So to hear that you're saying he is a good part of this movie oh, yeah. makes me even more excited to see the film, you know? And it's kind of a wonder that I don't think him and Tim Burton, if I'm wrong on this, have ever worked together. And it's kind of crazy that they haven't, considering they seem to have the right, the same amount, the same kind of tastes, you know, in their in their project. You may be right. He wasn't in like Sleepy Hollow or Planet of the Apes or anything. Yeah, yeah. no, no, All not right. that I remember. So, right. it's a nice choice. I mean, but um, what about Bellucci, though, man? I like the Deo callback, yeah. even though you know, I wish cool. I wish trailers moved away from like the slowed down song <laughs> and everything. Um, and it was good to see Jenna Ortega. You know, I, I think yeah. that she'll fit right into this world. I think she's, you know, a natural fit. Uh, so I am looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, do you think that's Jeffrey Jones they're bearing at the beginning of the movie? Um, considering, you know, the stuff that happened uh, off camera with Jeffrey and the accusations or whatever. That's bringing uh, the, oh, the, the funeral and everything. I'm yeah. not 100% sure. Okay. Um, I know that that his character's death will be addressed in the movie. Yeah. Uh, via stop motion. Oh, really? Oh, 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 interesting. Okay. Okay. All right. Cause I mean, Jeffrey is still alive. Um, yeah. The stuff that happened and the accusation his, his likeness appears in the film. Okay. All right. But he, he was not, he was not brought to set nor was he compensated. Yeah. Okay. Like they, they they owned his likeness, like photos right. or whatever from the first film or whatever. To put in. Um, yeah, someone says uh, Bam Bam Boom says assuming Defoe is the big bad, maybe. I don't know, Jeff. I haven't heard anything. We don't want to give anything away, but maybe no, I think he's the detective. I think he's like a an oh. like a detective in the afterlife or something. Oh, trying to figure out what happened. Oh, interesting. Okay. 
Yeah, and it was great to see Burn Gorman. I agree. Seeing Burn Gorman as the priest there at the funeral yeah. shot, I thought it was great as well. He'll fit right into Tim Burton's uh, world. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, but I thought it was good. For a minute 15, you got a taste of the world. You got to see Jenna Ortega. We don't know what Miss Shannon's school for girls is. We saw, as you said, the red bridge, the uh, so the red barn over the bridge there. We saw that covering. We saw the miniature uh, that Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin built in the first Love Beetlejuice. That. Yeah, and we saw the neon sign that we remember from the first Beetlejuice, and then the cracking open in the green uh, mist there that uh, Beetlejuice. So clearly, he's been uh, in that prison for thirty six years, and sometime somehow he convinces. Uh, Jenna Ortega to let him out. And so what? what is all that going to lead to? So I'm very curious. I would have liked another minute of footage in the story, but I'm sure an official trailer will have much more to tell us um, as we go along. Um, all right, let's get to something else green. Uh, Jeff, let's get to your Bill Simmons Boston Celtics story. Uh, you talked about this on your newsletter. Um, I think you broke this. So uh, thoughts on this. So uh, please let people know what's going on here. Yeah, I did. I, I called uh, Big Daddy to give him the heads up the night before, and he was like, I've already heard about this. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, and and I researched it, and the Celtics owner had gone on like a local radio show and talked about yeah. how there was a docuseries about the Celtics in the works, but he didn't say, you know, who was working on it. And obviously, yeah, yeah Bill Simmons you know, producing it is, is a pretty big uh, part of it all. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm told like interviews are already happening. You know, I, I wow. have, um, okay. I, I know people who are working on it and, and stuff like that. And it was, could I couldn't get like the confirmation. Um, Simmons people wouldn't even respond. Uh, but yeah, at, at that point it was like, all right, well, I have multiple sources like who are saying, you know, that this thing is in production <laughs> and that Bill's producing it. And here's the Celtics owner acknowledging like that this, that something is in the work. So yeah, I posted and I, as a Celtics fan, love it. Like I, I know people are like, Oh, well the problem with these sorts of sports documentaries is that, th that they're made by the teams. Right. And they're made yeah. by the people involved. And so you know, they, they can't get into the negative stuff or whatever. Right. And Bill's a homer and he's just going to, you know, do X, Y, or Z with it. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think Bill has a pretty good sense of like what works and what doesn't in a documentary, what people want to see versus what we should see, you know, what we need to see. Right. Um, and I think he wants to tell the story of the entire franchise, you know, and, and that means like, you know, with like the racist stuff in the, in the sixties, I'm sure, you know, they'll talk about what that environment was like for Bill Russell to play in. Yeah. I know that that was covered in the Russell documentary. Yeah, it It'll was. move up to, you know, the shitty years in the seventies, which has allowed us to get the high picks and, and, you know, build the big three. And then, I, I mean, I, I think it, it'll be, um, and they're following the team this year because I think if they're anticipating winning it all this year. Yeah. Um, so Good I'm point. looking forward to it. Uh, what about you, John? Yeah, you know, I love a, I love sports documentaries. I fucking love sports documentaries. I've watched just about everything I get my hands on when it comes to the NBA in terms of documentaries. I love that Lakers Celtics like six hour doc with Wahlberg and Ice Cube going back and forth with narrating that. It was that was an awesome thing. I love the Rivals one with uh, with Magic and Bird talking about their relationship, the progression of their relationship. And I'm a guy who grew up watching this Celtics team in their heyday in the 80s. I remember hating Larry Bird, hating Dennis Johnson, Robert Parrish. I was a Lakers guy. But as I got older, you know, you appreciate things. You look back and you kind of respect the amount of effort that it took to be a consistent winner. And we just finished the dynasty on Apple TV Plus. You know, Jeff and I, we reviewed it with JT the first couple of episodes. But the big complaint about that is that was it was so anti Belichick, and that it didn't. And even Simmons said this: it didn't dive into showing you how they put these teams together, how they won these Super Bowls, how they constructed all this kind of stuff. Which I understand the complaint here because they wanted to focus more on the controversies. Right. It seems like Bill doesn't, because he was criticizing this, will be focusing more on how these teams came together, how they became a brotherhood, how who got cut, who stayed, who got traded, how they had to make this stuff happen. So for me, if you're not going to have the Lakers show that we had, I can't remember the name of it now, Winning Time, if you're not going to have a, a, a fictional representation of what happened, then a documentary series like this would be good. My problem is his 30 for 30 stuff was great. The Andre the Giant doc was kind of paint by numbers. So oh, I really liked Andre the Giant because you don't know him as intimately as professional wrestling fans do. And so for us, there was not much new that was in that doc. So I hope 
that we're going to get a much more incisive documentary series here with everybody involved in some great stuff. But I look forward to it because those Celtics teams, you hated them because they were so fucking good. And um, I, and Larry Bird, people shouldn't forget the great trash talker and shooter that Larry Bird was, man. So I'd be, I'm looking forward to this uh, and uh, seeing w- uh, when it comes people to want to see shows about winners. Right. Yes. And, I mean, there's, and there is no more winning franchise than the Celtics. Right. I mean, right. I know that they have the same amount of titles as the Lakers, but um, and Red Auerbach. I mean, that's a character right there, Jeff. You know, people shouldn't forget. Sure. Oh, I love I love Chickless on, right. on winning time. But like you're going to see more of this stuff. OK, whether yeah. it was the Bulls, the Patriots, Celtics. You're going to see the the big Yankees docuseries. Eventually. Oh, you'll, see, you'll see the Packers and the Cowboys, too. So yeah. uh, I, I, I don't mind it. I just like you said, I think I hope that they find an interesting way into it because yeah. you don't want to just do the paint by the numbers stuff because, we you know, we, we have seen a lot of uh, Celtic stuff over the years. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot out there for people to enjoy. Uh, yeah. For a good point. Um, all right. So, da, 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 da. All right. Let's move on uh, to some other things here real quick. Um, oh, I don't think, is there, are there any big trailers this week that you want to discuss, Jeff, besides what we discussed here with the Beetlejuice trailer? Anything else? We had a new Fall Guy trailer. We had a new Furiosa trailer. We had some other trailers drop this week uh, that were – oh, we had a new Monkey Man trailer today. Anything stood out to you as a trailer that got you excited? Because I know you're not an easy – you don't easily get uh, excited by trailers. I mean, there's a there's this uh, indie horror movie in a violent nature that I'm okay. looking forward to. It's like okay. – Sorry, told from the serial killer's perspective. Oh, yes. You know, like normally you'll see the car full of young people going down the road and they'll pass. And maybe you'll see like, you know, the the killer like waiting in the woods watching them. This time you're in the woods with the killer seeing the the car full of people, you know, going by. Right. Uh, right. So it's just, yeah, a little bit of a a twist. uh, And I'm looking forward to something like that. Mm. Um, Furiosa. Yeah, I thought that looked good. What about the Acolyte, John? Yeah, I liked the Acolyte trailer for what it was. I mean, it's it's got Andor vibe to it's got an Andor vibe to it. You got lightsabers, you got Jedi, and you got Sith. So overall, I was pretty satisfied by the trailer, but I'm gonna need to see more uh, because they're pitching this thing, at least uh, Leslie Headland is, as a kind of true detective night country Star Wars. So if you're gonna sell me a detective story then I want to see more from this and some darker edges to it. And certainly Leslie with Russian doll can tell some dark stories. So I'm hoping that this is the Avenue they're going down and exploring it a bit more. What did you think? I've, I mean, I've heard good things about the acolyte, but oh. yeah, watching the trailer, it just, I was like, this kind of looks like everything I've seen before. I don't know. <laughs> People were like, no, it's not. There's no legacy characters. Or, you know, there's no, this, there's no, that it's like, true. I, yeah, I guess, but it just, I'm not trying to like you still have to stay true to what Star Wars is. You can't just try it out a different show and call it Star Wars. I get that, but yeah. I don't know, man. I <laughs> all these all the stuff just feels the same. Um what, what about, about what about Lee Jung Jai being in it from Squid Game? Did you like seeing him in this? Did you like seeing Carrie Ann Moss being part of this again or did it not? Yes, I, I actually I did I did like seeing Carrie Ann Moss. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't I don't have an attachment uh, to the to the Squid Games guy. Oh, wow. uh, okay. oh, yeah. Sorry. Like, go, go um, ahead. What were you gonna say? I cut you off there. I was gonna say about like Rebel Moon. What about that? The that trailer. Come on, man. Two? Come on, man. It's Zack Snyder. I went crazy for it. So I did a trailer reaction for it. it as soon as I saw it pop up, I was like, I'm cutting on and, and reacting to it. So I liked it uh, for what it was, and it's basically showing you it's gonna be a two hour fight uh, battle sequence the entire fucking movie and listening to the writer say the same thing that essentially they've been leading to this massive battle. I was hoping that we get a little bit more of the story, a little more of the hearts and the reasons why these people are fighting against the mother world armies. Uh, but maybe that ship has sailed or maybe I'll get all that fleshed out stuff when the larger cuts get dropped, if they ever get dropped by Zack Snyder. But for a trailer, from Zack Snyder, I got the visuals, I got the slow motion, I got the action sequences. Everything you could want in exactly, a Zack Snyder exactly, trailer. Exactly, yes. So I was happy. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I thought it looked uh, it, it looked fine. I mean, it was yeah. just like, yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, here's one thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah, please, bring it up. Why is everybody freaking out about all the AI stuff with Late Night with the Devil? Yeah, let's talk about it. 
This is so stupid. We let the viewers know what this is all about. It's like there's this new movie out this weekend, Late Night with the Devil with David Dasmalki. And it's on like Halloween night, 1977. He plays a late night talk show host uh, who has to do something crazy for sweeps. And he, you know, brings yeah. in a girl who claims to be possessed and everything. Anyways, there's like these interstitials. Yes. Right on the show that are, you know, like happy Halloween, like a like an old school 70s graphic. Yeah. And rather than having an artist create that graphic, they created it with AI. Yes. Right. And you only see this graphic maybe a few times throughout the movie. Three times. That's yeah, it. for like for like a couple seconds. I mean, we're talking about like mm -hmm. six seconds in, in a in a fucking 90 minute movie or something, and everybody's like losing their minds. And I understand how AI is a slippery slope, but like we don't need to condemn this movie. Because it, it used AI. Like, give me a fucking break. Like, what the fuck, people? <laughs> yeah, it was a strong uh, response to it, for sure. I think people looking for any any AI excuse to get upset about it. You know, social media is that they everyone is hunting for a new thing to be upset about on social media. No matter what side of the fence you're on on the issue, you're always looking for something new. But I want to play this uh, clip for you, Jeff, because David responded to this stuff. He was asked by oh, Kevin McCarthy. Yeah, yeah let me let me play it. it's just a minute uh and uh, he responds to this question uh and kevin mccarthy asked him the question who's a great uh, interviewer uh and let me play his response for this sure 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 yeah it was a couple of years ago and it's is you know i remember you know looking at them and they were they, they had such an awesome what the only thing that makes me sad is that we had such an awesome graphics design team and all these artists that were working on making this film so perfect so it, it makes me sad that that's a story that's I know. It's getting the attention, but I get it. I mean, I'm absolutely in a place right now where uh, that is something that we've learned so much about in the last few years since we made this movie, and that um, you know, I don't, I don't want near the the creative process. But I totally stand by the brothers. I was there with them as a couple of years ago, and they were um, this is brand new stuff, and like, oh look, this cool thing generated an image, and now our artists are doing a thing with it. So. I think they said it really well, and I stand by what they said, and I completely stand by this movie as a thoroughly original piece of work that um, that so many man hours went into this incredible artistic craftsmanship of building this set, building this world. So, you know, it's yeah. a good conversation to have, though. It's important conversation. We got to have it. So that was basically his response to it all. I thought that was a good response without getting. Yes. Too deep and lost in the weeds. What'd you think? It, it is. It's it's acknowledging, yeah, this is an important conversation. Yeah, we do need to have this conversation. If you feel like the need to boycott my little indie movie because of this, like, you know, he, he's not arguing with you. Um, but I, I just think it's ridiculous. I haven't listened to Matt Bellamy's, uh, you know, podcast today, his episode of the town. Okay. But it was all about AI and how AI is already here. And, oh, yeah. and like, just because, yeah, like, you, you know, some people, don't notice it or don't see it. Like everybody's already using it. So yeah, yeah. the fact that we're attacking this little indie horror movie for, for, for doing something as small and insignificant as this, I think it's ridiculous. And I just, it's just like, it emphasizes that people are just bullies on social yeah. media. Yeah. Like fuck everyone who, who came after <laughs> this movie. It's yeah. Ridiculous. I think so too, because it's a small film They can't really defend itself. Right. I mean, it's a small film. It's just, it's an original thing. What, what is everybody complaining about? original movies i want to see original stories original movies well here's something original and then you get people getting upset because there's three instances of two to three seconds of an ai image on screen i guarantee you 95 percent of the people who go see this movie will not catch that as ai won't give two shits about it and will move on to the next thing this isn't a movie that's going we must now use AI and it's proponent in AI. You must, it's not that at all. And as David said in his answer, like right. we shot this movie a couple of years ago. So it was before all of this blew right. up. And, 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 yeah. Before AI became such a sensitive point uh, yeah. in this yeah. town with so many people out of work. And and, and I think that's definitely what it's about. Yeah. Um, and and I, that is important to keep in mind. So David's yeah. right. It's an important conversation to have. I'm sure that the, the headlines and the blowback will maybe have ramifications for production. Sure right now right you know where someone some director may be like "Ooh, like do i want to use ai or do i want to just hire uh, a graphic designer we don't want to get late night with the deviled um you know <laughs> but like fucking hey guys if, you, if that's really making or breaking your ticket purchase decision this weekend like yeah sorry <laughs> yes you gotta work harder than that you gotta work harder than the that. movie by the way has a hundred percent fresh on rotten tomatoes yeah. but you, you know why that is right why 
because Jeff Snyder ain't on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> you didn't like it? Oh, no. I thought it was okay. You were looking forward to this one, too. I was. I thought it was okay. I thought it was a little... That's a shame. A little cheese ball. A, okay. little, a little low budge and a little corny towards the end. Oh, okay. It, okay. Had, it had me at first, and it, it kind of... I don't know. I just didn't love where it went or... Yeah. Well, you're a horror connoisseur, so it's tough to please you when it comes to it horror, is. isn't it? It is. You've seen it all. You've seen all the tricks. You've seen all the moves. It's tough. This again, a very good premise, and I love seeing David front and center, right, with a right, role right. like this. But yeah, it just kind of, you know, what it felt like. What? This is what I said because Stephanie actually liked it. I think a little bit more than I did. Okay. Um, I said that should have been a VHS short film. Oh, like, uh, one of the shorts in the VHS movies. Right, right, right. That whole thing would have been a oh. fucking killer 25 to 30 minute like episode, you know, like segment yeah. of a, of the new VHS movie. That was not a feature length movie. <laughs> okay, fair point. Have you seen the Sydney Sweeney Nun movie, the horror that's also coming out this weekend? Is that worth a watch? It was actually. I, I <laughs> liked it. Um, I didn't. It's not great. It's definitely okay. not great, um, but it's worth a look. I, I liked how it was directed by Michael Mohan. I, th I think the script is a little thin, okay. um, but I liked how it was done, and I thought she was good in it. I think she's not, people, a, not a bad actress. Some people are saying this is her best work so far. Would That's you agree with it? No, because I think she's fantastic on Euphoria. Um, okay. I, I truly think she's, she's great on that show. Mm. But, yeah, she's just like – She's not someone you can just dismiss as a walking pair of breasts, okay? Which I think is how a lot of people do. You know, they just oh, she's getting cast because she has big boobs or whatever. I don't think that's it. I think she I don't actually, think that's good yeah, I, don't, I think she's talented, um, yeah. and I think I think she's good in in this movie. However ridiculous as it may seem, like you know, for her to play a nun. You know, <laughs> uh, but well. yeah, it, it and I liked how it ended. That's the thing; it stuck the landing for me in terms yeah. of the ending, and that's what so many of these movies come down to. It's like if you can't stick the landing, I don't really give a shit how good the slow the slow burn was leading up to it. Fair point. Look, just so we're clear, Ingrid Bergman and Sally Field both played nuns, and you know, there a lot of people felt they were quite attractive in their days. So, um, yeah, Immaculate, that's the name of the movie uh, that's out this weekend. Well, let's move on to more reviews here, Jeff, before we hit another break. Uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire came out, or it's coming out this weekend. I got a chance to see it on Tuesday night. Did you get a chance to see it? What are your thoughts on Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? I did see it. I thought it was okay. Mm -hmm. It was certainly not as good as the first two, like original Ghostbusters. One hundred percent. But it may very well have been my favorite of these last three. You know, oh. with the, the, the female-led Ghostbusters okay. and Afterlife, and and now Frozen Empire. I it still has some story issues, and mm -hmm. there's way too many characters, which is like way, way too many characters to have to service. But. There was something about it that I thought was entertaining and watchable, and I loved Kumail. It was great to have Kumail back yeah. because that guy went and did the big sick, and he was amazing in the big sick. Yeah. And his career has been awful since then. Awful. <laughs> like the stuff he's been making, Eternals and the Lovebirds, and just like Oh God, I forgot about Lovebirds. So it's I thought it was great to have him back. What did you think? Yeah, I I, I thought the movie was good, not great. Uh I thought it was funny at times. With other humor falling short, I do agree with you. Too many characters, like the blonde English dude. I don't know why he's in there. The love interest for Finn Wolfhard that really doesn't get fleshed out that much. Uh, I was like, okay, fine. Um, that's cool. But I think McKenna Grace, Grace is the saving grace, to use that term, of the movie. Because I really liked her in the film. And I don't, I don't remember the actress who plays her friend. I don't want to spoil anything, but... I thought their interactions were a really cool part of the movie. Carrie Coon seemed to be a bit not necessary for the film and that is weird entirely weird coon, right i mean because carrie coon is such a fucking great actress that it almost seems like she's just on a lark doing this and getting a nice paycheck because paul rudd is much more the focus and he's not even the biologically connected to the kids but he's much more the focus of the movie um and, and mckenna grace so those are the two that i think really stand out but i like the the design of the villain, very Slender Man type villain, which I thought was a nice edge to it. It had a darkness to this film that I liked uh, as well. Um, and yeah, Kumail, great to see Kumail. And great to see the old people. 
uh, coming back, especially William Atherton, man. I was so happy to see him in the movie. And I don't think the scenes 100% worked, uh, but yeah. uh, but for what it was, it's you can go on a Saturday afternoon and it won't kill you. It's, why it's, why you know, is he the mayor? Yeah, exactly. Why would this guy become the mayor? No sense. <laughs> um, right. I, I To me, it was just very clearly like Kumail was great in this. And yeah. I, I actually really liked Aykroyd. Yeah, I thought so too. Dan did a really nice job in the movie. Aykroyd, I'm telling you, I wrote it last night in the newsletter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This guy, it's like he's not acting. Yeah. Okay. They'll ask him some fucking paranormal question, and when I, uh, I'm watching Dan Aykroyd answer the question. I'm not as I'm not seeing Ray Stance. <laughs> so like that, that, like he just is a Ghostbuster almost. Yeah. Like yeah. that's been almost his identity for 40 years. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, it was good to see him, but yeah, like, um, having Bill Murray, like waltz in and out of, that was weird movie whenever he wanted. I was like, what, why are we even bringing this guy back? At this point? Yeah, it was weird. It was weird because you see him and then poof, for long stretches and then he's back. Um, it was great to see Annie, great to see Ernie Hudson as well. Um, uh, but the, yeah, the, the ghost girl stuff did not work for me. Oh, really? Oh, I like that. Okay. All right. Fair point. Fair point. And like to have okay, like podcast and lucky, like yeah, he, like what? They all move to NY. I mean, Finn, Finn Wolfhard gets like lost. Oh yeah, like, no. Finn knows this is not my movie. This is McKenna's movie. I'm just gonna you know be in the scenes that I'm in and make my money. Now, she's I think a that's good actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, coming on, McKenna Grace. I'm I'm sure, brother, we're gonna be seeing her a lot as as the years go on. I thought she was uh, really good in the film as well. Uh, but, 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 all right, and let's move on to Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Uh, I am, how can I say this? I am an hour and 50 minutes into the movie. I I had to stop and do our show uh, right before the final finale scenes, but I think I've seen enough to have an opinion on this movie. Uh, Jeff, uh, your thoughts here on Roadhouse, the Jake Gyllenhaal remake that's up on Prime Video. I think Steph and I went to bed around 11.25, 11.30 last night, and I was okay. like, oof, if I stay up another 30 minutes, <laughs> Roadhouse will be on. And she was like, do it. <laughs> she just wanted to sleep alone in the bed. Um, yeah, she'd rather have me her. toss and turn. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, I did I did stay up till midnight. I did watch it. And oh. uh, at 2 in the morning when I went to bed, I was glad I stayed up. I had a blast with it. <laughs> I thought Jake – was awesome and i really liked what conor mcgregor was doing here like oh my god i mean he's just chewing scenery left and right uh and making no bones about it other people get nervous when they're going to do their first film (laughs) conor looked like fuck yeah like give it to me let me have some fun with this thing because because i mean and and so things i saw some people criticizing conor i'm like did you see the original fucking movie i mean come on this is these are not oscar level performances that you're getting from swayze or elliot or any of the weird people that are in the movie um here's what i'll say it's a fun movie to watch while you're doing other things you don't got to pay that much attention to it but it's uh but i like jake's performance i would have liked to have known about what happened with jake through a different manner when you find out about it um, uh, I thought Daniela Melchor was great. I love her. Um, Joaquin Dos Santos showing up randomly is always fun, just like he did in the in Shogun. Um, uh, and I thought I thought Doug Lyman did a nice job directing the movie. Like it's a beautiful film. They certainly spent the right amount of money in certain areas uh, for it. But yeah, this one is is fun. It's not great, but it's fun for what it is. And just like the original movie, which I don't think is that great, it's fun for what it is. Um, and if you want to enjoy Jake, I just don't understand why it's two hours, bro. There's no reason this should be two hours. It was a little long. It don't was lie. a little yeah. long. Uh, do you think it should have been theatrical? No. Fuck no. Nobody would have gone to see this. Nobody. I'm you don't think you. so? Southpaw didn't do dick. I can't imagine... I thought Southwest did well. It did better no. than I think that you you and I have remembered. I don't think so, but I'll look it up. But go go, go to boxofficemojo.com and uh, and type in Southpaw. You're going to be surprised. Look at this guy. Like I've never done this before. Southpaw, a budget of thirty million. It ended up making fifty two domestically. Do and the wor- do the worldwide. The world worldwide ninety one million. All right, fine. Ninety one million worldwide. All right, fine. Did I, did, I mean that's okay. It's like a double. 
Yeah. It's a lead double. Exactly. Um, and, and I understand at this point, this was made for they, don't wanna, they don't want to hit singles and doubles, right? Because right. it's like, well, you know, wh- why are we spending $40 million on marketing to make like a few million, a few million dollars, basically, you know, right. when it's all right. said and done. Um, so I think that this would have worked theatrically with a modest spend, but I understand <laughs> why Amazon is keeping it exclusively on, on Prime Video and why they felt like this is just a streaming movie and it's going to be bolster subscribers for our platform. And hmm. yeah. 60 million is what it would have been theatrically. That's what the budget would have been. I guarantee it'd have been a shorter film at 60 million, but 85 million streaming for two hours, you know, it's not it's worth a watch is what i would say at the end of the day and there's some there's some good fight sequences that's for yeah, sure yeah i think it's definitely fun it's it's a yeah. fun breezy movie it's a great like it's totally. dad tv totally totally um and i think jake may have unlocked a new phase of his career if jake can do these kinds of like liam neeson but younger guy movies i think jake uh could have a lot of fun having a whole second career doing these kinds of films. Uh, I think it'd be fun. He was so much better in this than in Ambulance. Like He was like manic oh. in Ambulance. I did not care for that performance, and he's one of my favorite actors. Uh, but he's just so like relaxed and chill in this yeah. movie. There are a couple of moments in the film where I thought to myself, I would like to see a Jake Gyllenhaal villain movie where he's not fucking Mysterio. I mean, legitimately villain movie. And you had that, he had a couple of those Nightcrawler moments with those stairs that I thought were fucking great. And you remember, oh yeah, this guy can play fucking villain when he wants to. And so I hope someone is out there seeing this movie going, let's get him to play a villain in this great movie we're putting together. Because I think Jake deserves a few hits, man. This had a good cast too. Like I yeah. like Lucas Gage as the other bartender. I liked Bo Knapp as, mm-hmm. uh, and, and also um, Magnuson, Billy Magnuson. Yeah. Right. As good. like the antagonist. Um Bo Knapp is like his main henchman. And I like the bartender too. Um, uh, yeah. the, the, the woman who brings yeah. him food. Yeah. And Dele- Daniela Melcher, I thought was nice. Um, was that post Malone in the beginning having the fight? Yeah. <laughs> Before the weight loss too. He looks, he looked uh, a lot heavier in that scene than, yeah. he, and, yeah. than like he does now in concert. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, roadhouse thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs, yeah, just slightly up. Yeah, slightly up, I would say. All right. Um, all right. Do a uh, commercial yeah. break and then take yeah. some questions. That sounds good. Let's take a break. We'll be right back right after this, y'all. All right. For those of you new to the show, we do that so I can put the commercials up for the podcast. If you want to listen to the podcast, it's on uh, wherever you download podcasts. The hot mic, you want to subscribe to it, we would appreciate it very much. All right. Let's get into these questions, Jeff. Let's hit some of these stream labs and these super chats uh, from our viewers and answer some of these. Wiley OFC, what's up, Wiley? Says, just got out of the new Ghostbusters, went in with low expectations, and came out with really liking it. It had flaws, but felt like an early 2000s action adventure movie, which I love so much. Thanks. Yeah. Had kind of that mummy vibe to it, I would say. Yeah. What do you say there, Jeff? Do you agree? Sorry, I was dealing with uh, an Instagram thing. I'm um, just gonna the new Ghostbusters went in with. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean a little bit. I see what Wiley is saying there with with the vibe and everything. Um, but I didn't, I didn't mind it. Like the story to me, bringing it back to New York yeah. made sense. Um, I don't. know. They kept it simple enough. I didn't think it was like that convoluted. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Wiley also says, and also Roka watching The Crown for the first time just got past the Aberfan episode, incredible and heartbreaking. Yeah, that's the best episode of the series of all seasons of The Crown. That's the greatest episode of The Crown. So glad you liked it, brother man. And keep watching. There's more good stuff to come from that series for sure. Although now with the missing Kate Middleton, I, I think they should uh, green light a new series right now, a new season of that fucking show right now to find out where Kate is. Uh, Jonah Clore what, says, What do you think's going on there? Okay, you really want my answer? Okay, here's my answer. Uh, I have followed the royal family since Princess Diana. I am a monarchist. I'm not going to lie. I like the royal family. I know the Meghan Markle stuff. And I respect that. I totally agree. Way wrong. But there's usually fire when there's smoke. It's really rare when there's a lot of smoke about around the royal family on a certain issue, and it's not true. So... 
There is something going on here. I don't. Some people were speculating that she might be dead and they're going to make an announcement. I don't think that's true. The cheating stuff, though, I think might bear fruit. And the possibility that this woman is having Prince William's baby, I think is very possible. And if Kate is suffering from a mental breakdown because the guy whose mother was cheated on by his dad is cheating on the woman who he committed himself to. And so doing it all over again, I think would be a colossal mind fuck to navigate. So that's what I think. What, what do you think? Uh, Stephanie has, um, <laughs> yeah, what's Stephanie's a, a similar theory, uh, okay. which, you know, plays to the cheated, cheated woman, uh, of it all. Yeah. Um, but, uh, we, we potentially think it's a, uh, an eating disorder. Ooh, brought on by the stress possibly of the cheating and all of that. I think that's very, very possible because she went in for a stomach issue. Um, and also Charles has been kind of absent. So where's Charles been in all of this cancer stuff? We'll so. see. I mean, I don't want to like speculate on this stuff because just asked me. I, 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 I mean, something yeah. is weird is going on. Weird is right? going on. But Agreed. yeah, I, if it is a medical thing, I, and I hope, I just hope she's okay. Agreed. Agreed, brother. Jonah Clark says, I feel Chazelle has nothing in development because he achieved things most directors work whole careers for an Oscar plus three passion projects before the age of 40. Uh, is that true, uh, Jeff? Do you think he's taking a break? Jonah, do you think that Damien Chazelle has nothing in development, or do you think that us reporters simply haven't found out about it? <laughs> oh, it's an excellent point. Excellent point. Yeah, think I mean, about that. Guys, just, just because the press hasn't reported on something doesn't mean that these artists are just like sitting by the phone. Like, I'm sure he's working on something. He's a storyteller. Yeah, good point. Trash Panda says a bond offer without a director's uh, without a director's offer sounds false. Hmm? No, I mean, I, I thought that particularly if it's somebody if it is somebody like nolan like mm. nolan's not going to take whatever bond they give him right True. like nolan's gonna say i want to pick my own fucking bond right um but if it's not nolan they've definitely done that before where you know the broccoli yeah. say hey this is our bond and now we'll find the director it's not like martin campbell was like wait i've got to verify if pierce brosnan is the right guy no right no. exactly yeah exactly yeah. broccoli they just make that decision on their own and then bring exactly. in the director so yeah, exactly. uh yeah not not necessary I agree. It's a case by case basis. Oliver thirty seven forty eight says, "Have you guys seen the short film Strange Way of Life yet? It's really good. This finally made me see Pedro Pascal as a true leading man." P.S. It doesn't hurt that we get to appreciate Zaddy's cheeks and all their glory. LOL. J.K. Isn't this the uh, Guillermo one? Isn't this what this one uh, with him and Ethan? Pedro Hart? Almodovar, right? right? Oh, Almodovar. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I did not see it. No. Okay. No, I, I haven't seen him it. And Ethan Hart. Hmm. I guess I'll have to now. We get a shot of his. Uh, Posterior. Murder Ranta says uh, Sisu 2 confirmed as it got a 950,000 euro production grant from the Finnish Film Foundation filming beginning late summer slash early fall. Yeah, did you get up seeing Sisu, Jeff, or no? I fucking love Sisu, and this is incredible news that you're breaking this news to me. Wow. I had no idea that there was going to be a Sisu sequel, and it's... I'm pumped for that because that was like, I saw that movie as, as much as any other movie that year. That's a fucking badass revenge film. About like three sure. or four times. Yeah, for sure. That's great. Fantastic314 says, Jeff, with the awesome analogy, Michael Mann has lost his fastball. Got me immediately thinking of Harris. I don't got an arm like yours. I got to put anything on the ball that I can, which is a major league reference. Chelsea Ross talking to Charlie Sheen. Got a little Crisco. Put a little pepper up my nose. I use a little snot on the ball. Yeah, exactly. Great, great connection. Jeff, did you get the uh, connection or no? No. I, 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 I love Major League, but I did God not sense. pick up on that reference. Come on. Uh, Goopy G says, I remember Jeff's shirt from Meet the Movie Press days. <laughs> yeah, baby. My brother designed this shirt. I, I no. take great care of it. Look at that. Wow. Had it a long time. Mickey Doss says, Jeff and John, what are your thoughts on the Acolyte? John, I saw your take. And Jeff, I agree. It looks mid. Please tell me you have some other Star Wars news. Jeff. Well, we want to talk about the Acolyte. So, Jeff, do you have any Star Wars news? Not this week, but I would be patient. Oh, interesting. All right. Geeky Lawrence 2007 says, good day, gentlemen. Jeff, I got to ask. With all the news about Ryan Johnson's two-picture deal at, w at Warner Brothers and him also starting to shoot another Knives Out film later this year, is there no hope for a Poker Face season two? Jeff? I've told you this. I've been saying this for months, guys. Yes. From what I heard, yeah. Ryan, like Ron Bergman or whatever, like sat Ryan down and was like, what are we doing here? 
<laughs> and, and I think it was just like, do we really like you're in the prime of your career? Do we really want to spend this time right now on season two of a Peacock series? Yeah. Now yeah. that doesn't mean it's not happening, but it's certainly been slow going. It seems like to me. Yeah. So I don't know if it's not happening or if, if he's trying to find the right person to sort of pass that over to like, and give yeah. them the bulk of the responsibilities in terms of that show, uh, or if they're yeah, or if he's just gonna like wait until after the Knives Out trilogy. But I'm telling you, there's something up with Poker Face season two. It's been very strange how little we've heard about it, and I'm told yeah. it's because there's a reluctance for Ryan to come back and do it because he feels like his time can be better spent elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, you're successful theatrically. It's tough to swing down and keep doing TV stuff. It is. It just is. And I mean, Natasha's great in that role, but. It may not be what Brian wa Ryan wants to be committed to all the whole time, and making a TV show, especially as many episodes as that, it's a, a huge commitment. Haunted underscore Autumn says Beetlejuice trailer release was an epic failure of marketing. Wow, WB released a days long social media campaign promoting it, deleted it on the day of release, then let bootleg versions uh, release, and we're left scrambling to put it out in response to said bootlegs. They could have marketed it as only in theaters to get butts in seats but they flubbed the entire this entirely sure Beetlejuice will be fine but they could have easily gotten much more of a pop for much less effort uh i don't know what haunted autumn is talking about because everyone is talking about this Beetlejuice teaser trailer online on social media it's getting great responses i had almost two thousand views in one hour of my after dropping my reaction and that never happens so uh, I think it. they rolled this out pretty fine. And I don't know what you're talking about with the marketing. I didn't catch any of that. Like, I didn't see any of that. So to me, it was more a matter of the trailer coming out. I mean, in exclusively in theaters, Haunted on them, it, attached to what? It's attached to Ghostbusters, which yeah, is a maybe. Sony movie. Right, right, right. So why right. would Warner Brothers be like, go exclusively to theaters and go see, go see Ghostbusters to watch Beetlejuice? No, that doesn't make any sense. Um... I, I agree with you that like the trailer, uh, the, but like Warner Brothers never said, "Hey, the trailer's coming Monday or the trailer's coming Tuesday," and now right. it's Thursday and we're all waiting for it. Like those are trail like scoopers and trailer Twitter feeds and like all yeah. kinds of like I don't I just don't understand why does Warner Brothers have to release it on the day that some scooper said that they were going to? Yeah, yeah. Could it could it be that they had backwards information or that this other scooper didn't know that Fox was releasing the Alien Romulus trailer at 9 a.m. on right. Wednesday? And so right. yeah, no, I don't understand why Warner Brothers needs the whole day, you know, to be the the, the trailer that everybody talks about. You can put out two trailers in a day, it's fine. Lord knows. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't think that they botched it at all. I was more confused that you would drop it at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Do you know what I'm saying? That's a that's a weird one to drop at 2 p.m. in the afternoon because there was only Game of Thrones this morning. Because he was right though because they did oh, start. Happened? It started to leak, right? I started the first oh, thing I saw was the bootleg. I didn't see anything. So yeah, yeah. no, I, I the first thing I saw was a bootleg version, and, and oh. sure enough, it was like, oh, now that there's a bootleg, now that the, now they'll put it out, um, even okay. though it is too. Right, right. But yeah, um, I mean, with with that trailer starting yeah. to you know be seen. Yes. Right. Uh, you know, by, by people going to see Ghostbusters, then yeah, it only made sense to put it out online. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Brandon says there's been James Bond potential actors that people wanted. Henry Cavill, Idris Elba, Tom Hiddleston. In your opinion, can more than one Bond film exist with different actors in the same universe or in its own universe at the same time? Oof. No. Yeah, no. That's splitting the pie too much. And I think fans would go um ape shit about it. Um yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't need like a Bond movie and a Bond TV show where Bond is played by separate actors. No. Right. Uh, I mean, you can have a MI6 TV show that is connected to James Bond, but James Bond maybe only appears once or twice in the series. You could have that, but you cannot have multiple James Bonds. That would be weird. Yeah. Idris Elba was never, never going to be Bond. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Keltrick Pickens, John, have you ever considered making a weekly horror show? <laughs> Maybe have Perry be your co host. Oh, no, she's fine doing her own thing. She's got Matt Donato, she does that show with him. It can help get the narrative to treat horror off your back. Look at how successful Dead Meat is. No, I have thought of doing a horror show on the channel by myself, not with anybody else, because honestly, I'm just getting to the point where I have to start focusing on me, on my stuff solo. So, yes, I've considered doing that, but um, not with anyone else. So 
there may be something coming down the road that I'll put up on the weekends every once in a while, kind of a horror show and have fun with it. Cause I do enjoy horror. I don't hate horror, um, but I'm very selective on the horror that I watch. So it could be fun to do. We will see, but I appreciate the love Keltrick and the idea, brother, man. Casper uh, says thoughts on Hollywood bullying Jonathan Glazer for his Oscar speech. I don't know. That's a big, long conversation, Jeff. Do you, I know you're Jewish. Do you want to get into it? Do you want to say anything about this or do you want to leave it alone? Up to you. I mean, again, I just didn't think it was the appropriate time. I get that you can't just go up there and be like, hey, Academy, thanks a lot, yeah. and, and then leave the stage. But, like, not – yeah, it's like this is a larger conversation. I would have just done it as, like, part of an interview mm. after winning the Oscar, you know, like said it in an interview, and then maybe someone could have asked some follow-up questions. And uh, yeah. so I, it, to me it just wasn't the time or place. As far as, like, all these fucking signatures and petitions, I don't pay attention to any of that stuff. People don't even know what they're signing anymore. They just want to be outraged or be part of a group. Um, I don't think what I just I don't think it, what Jonathan Glazer said was like that out of line or anything. Like it, it does make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a complicated it's a complicated thing. But like, do I think John Jonathan Glazer gives a fuck what Hollywood thinks about him? No. Yeah. Right. You know, so it's like, oh, the, the head of, you know, the creator of modern family won't work with me. Like, who gives a shit? Right. <laughs> yeah, I think you're I think you're on point there. But look, I, I think once you, if you win an award, you got a right to say. Whatever you're feeling about that situation, and he had a point of view on it, and I am not going to weigh in on one side or the other, because that situation is one of the most combustible issues to talk about. You're going to piss off people no matter what side of the fence you take or what side of the issue you take on this. Uh, and I thought he had a right to speak his truth, and he spoke it. And what, people can write whatever they want or do petitions, whatever they want. I, I think he's got a right to speak his mind. It's freedom of speech. And so, you know. I just haven't liked the response that I've seen to the people who do who did take issue with it. Like, these are yeah. like rabbis and like the head of like Auschwitz. And people are like, look at these fucking guys. Like, why are they offended by this speech? Like, it's like you don't get to tell the Jews yes. <laughs> what they're offended by. Agreed. There's a trade editor, okay? I'm not going to yeah. name him, and I haven't responded to him on social media. But like, out of yeah. all the things I've read about Glazer and the speech, yeah. this one trade editor's thing is what stands out to me, and and it is just like, you know, look at like look at these ghouls coming after Jonathan Glazer. It's like, bro, you're talking about like Rabbi Marvin here, like higher or whatever, like. He's not a ghoul, okay? You're a fucking moron. <laughs> so uh, I think that the Jews have every right to be offended. Um, I don't think like anyone's trying to cancel Jonathan Glazer or make sure he doesn't like direct another movie. I, again, I just don't. Understand, like, what is the point of this? You're not going to like put the toothpaste back in the tube. You're not going to. You're not going to. Are we trying to get him to apologize for his speech? Like, I don't want him to apologize. He doesn't owe me an apology. Yeah. So yeah. what is the point of this petition? Right. It's just to call. It's just to out him. In the we're angry yeah yeah basically and and maybe yeah. even cancel him if you want to use that term loosely uh but who knows who knows in the end and again i'm not opining on either side of this thing um all right let's move on to some stream labs real quick and then we'll i think we can wrap up the show after this jeff uh bu -bu 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 okay um uh, uh prophet uh perineum says uh, hey all uh, hey y'all i know you guys have some trepidations on e2 uh, but have you guys heard any new casting updates on it? Like who's going to be playing Hannah or Cicero or Nate? Jeremy Allen White as Hannah is has been thrown around. Not a fan of it, really. And what is your favorite Michael Mann film? Heat. Good question. Is it Heat still? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What do I think of Jeremy Allen White as Hannah? Yeah. No. Okay. I'm surprised you had heat over the insider. I'm surprised you, you love that fucking movie so much. I love them both. I mean, I, I think I actually do it, did a podcast that comes out tomorrow where I, mm. I go down my top 10 of all time and they, they both might be on there. Wow. Of all time. I think wow. yeah, possibly heat, heat is definitely on there. The insider yeah. might be like, you know, yeah. Nine or 10. Um, I mean, <sighs> I guess Heat is my favorite. I guess Heat is, yeah, I guess Heat is his number one film, in my opinion. But Last of the Mohicans is my favorite. 
So that's what I would say. Um, because I I saw him talk about it at the um, Egyptian one time, and it was a a great experience. I did watch Last of the Mohegans for the first time a few weeks ago. Oh, and your thoughts? It's good, but it's not it's not Heat Insider Manhunter level. It's Come on, oh, the- whoa, whoa. Man, whoa. Manhunter is so amazing. Better than Manhunter. Come on. All right. Uh, Kombucha Caller says, hey, people, hope you guys are doing well. Any news update on the DCU's lanterns? Jeff, you mentioned Lindelof being attached. Is Tom King also attached? And uh, Ozark writer Tom Mundy. It's my second most anticipated uh, uh, project besides Superman. Thanks and have an amazing day, Jeff. I don't hear anything about this. So, uh, Yes. Well, oh, yes, what? Yes to what that person said. <laughs> okay, so Tom King is attached and Ozark writer Tom Mundy is attached? Okay. Chris Chris Mundy. Chris, Chris Mundy. Mundy. Oh, it says Tom Mundy. Oh, Chris Mundy. Okay, fair point. Uh, yes, it was... Um, hold on. Just one second. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. Anyways, I'm, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's true. Okay. I was, I was seeing if I had anything else to add on the lanterns front. But. Oh, okay. Uh, Thomas Barrows says, "Do you guys have thoughts to share Ethan Cohen's Drive Away Dolls?" Yeah, I did not see it, Jeff. Didn't hear great things about it. Uh, did you see Drive Away Dolls? I did. I, by the way, I found the thing. It said, uh, yeah, it said the Chris Mundy, Tom King, Writing Lanterns, Damon serving as a consulting producer, and they're writing it for the next couple of months. Uh, there's no casting on it at the moment. They want at least one big name for it. Uh, okay. They need to write it first so they can figure out, you know, scheduling and availability and all that stuff before getting somebody. So, they do, they, so uh, basically, I think that the, the takeaway from that little segment there on lanterns is it's not going to be Finn Whitrock and Jeremy Irvine, mm-hmm. right? You can't, this is a huge budget show, right? You need a star. You can't have Finn Whitrock as the fucking star. I'm sorry. So no. there you go. Uh, what was it? What was the next one? Uh, bu- 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 oh, uh, do you have thoughts on drive away drive, yeah, drive, drive away dolls? Yeah. yeah. Hated it. Hated it. Bad, 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 bad movie. Yeah. I heard this from a number of people, which is why I did not go see it. Trente said, hey, fellas, Jeff, you hinted at a Mike Quarry biopic last week on the show. Is that development, or are there any sports athlete biopics we could see in the near future? Love the show. I have heard that there's a a, a Mike Quarry biopic. I don't want to say who I've heard is working on it because I haven't confirmed it. Okay. Um, But uh, I did hear that. I got like a slew of biopic news. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, but like nothing that was like confirmed run with it like a lot of like you know this is early days and it depends on this and that and you know so we'll see okay mike joy says i hope alien romulus has one face hugger that's different and just wants to sing (laughs) hello my baby hello (laughs) hello my ragtime gal instead of infecting someone there you go mike you got the song out uh that's not gonna happen (laughs) Good question, Mike. Uh, Mr. Datvo, this is our last one here so far. Hey, guys, great show. Please feel, feel, please feel free not to answer. This is going to cause you trouble in your community. But what's going on with the Fandom Entertainment Channel? They never really recovered after COVID. Uh, I don't know anything about this, Jeff. I, I uh, Listen, guys, I don't pay attention to what's going on in the sphere because I'm too busy trying to build my show up or my channel up. So I don't have time to monitor what's going on. Plus, living in San Diego, I'm not surrounded by everybody who's working on this stuff, so I don't hear anything in the wind. But do you know anything about this, Jeff? Because I do not. This is a, qu- a question about the fandom entertainment channel and how yeah. it hasn't recovered since COVID. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. I have no idea. Um, I mean, obviously, things are just brutal out there all over yeah. today. Mike Ryan tweeting that he, you know, is, is leaving up rocks after yeah, almost that. 10 years, yeah. uh, which is like, geez, if Mike Ryan, you know, yeah. can't, 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 uh, stick around, what, what hope do the rest of us have? Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely sad what's going on out there. Uh, a lot of cuts. Listen, the end is coming. This is what I'm telling you all. The end is coming for these outlets being able to afford all these employees and pay them at, great rates those days are 
dying. I don't think anybody's getting paid a great rate anymore. But yeah, unless you're at Penske, right? Unless you're at Hollywood Reporter, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um. So those days are are dying, if not dead already. So you're going to see that happening. People are going to go and 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 they're going to leave, and they're not going to be able to pay them in the same amount. That's the game. You know, and, and unfortunately, that's what happens, uh, which is why I'm very fortunate to do what I'm doing here solo without having to worry about any of that kind of stuff here. And uh, Jeff as well with his newsletter. So, you know, walking out solo, it's not easy, but it's worth it if you can make it work, man. Um, all right. We got a couple of super chats that came just came through here. So let me hit these. Luke Skywanker says, who's your bond pick? Mine's Tom Hardy slash Dan Stevens. Nah, neither one of those. I think Dan Stevens would be great, but like I would have chosen Dan Stevens a decade ago. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like yeah. anything else? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's the guy that's in uh the Bob Marley film? I interviewed him a while ago. He's in Happy King, Valley. King, Kingsley Benadir or oh, no. Kingsley Benadir is great. He would be an interesting Bob, but I don't think he's James Norton. Um, uh, I interviewed James uh, a couple of years ago about the possibility of playing Bond. Uh, and I, I like him as a possibility, but I don't know if it'll ever happen, but I like him as a choice. Uh, Tom Hardy, Dan Stevens, too big, too big. They need someone. Who's yeah, not- Tom Hardy's definitely too big. But like uh, the guy that you just mentioned, James yeah. Norton, yeah. and like the guy from Poldark and Tom Ellis, and just yeah. like, oh, there's like a whole bunch of these British actors. And I'm, I'm like, who are these people? Who knew Daniel Craig, bro? Nobody knew Sean Connery. Daniel Craig had done more. Layer Cake, at least. Like Layer Cake was like a perfect audition for that. Ten He'd people things, on Layer Cake. Like Ro- Road to Perdition. Um, I, I just, yeah. Some of the, the European names that have been rumored for this, I'm just like, I hope not. Aiden Turner? Like, no. Yeah, I don't see Aiden Turner. I could it. see Callum Turner. <laughs> okay. All right. I can see Kathleen Turner. Carlton Rudder says, has there ever been a movie that you were polar opposites on? One of you thought it was amazing, whilst the other thought it was a waste I'm of sure time. sure a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm Not sure I'm sure, sure some terrible comic book movie that John liked that I was like, what? Pretty much every Star Wars movie we're probably on the opposite sides of, except for Empire Strikes Back, I would imagine. Uh, but no, Jeff and I, yeah, uh, we don't always agree on the I don't, I don't have real passionate feelings about the Star Wars movies. So. Well, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. You're like, whatever. It's cool. Whatever. Um, but yeah, superhero certainly a superhero films we could probably go yeah. round and round about for sure. Um, let's see, Connor Dorian, Charlie Manx says, Did you know that they are remaking the never ending story into multiple live action movies? Yes, we talked about that earlier on the Geek Buddies today that shows up if you want to watch it. But Jeff, is there a market for the never ending story? Do you think they're trying to go yeah. the route here as we saw with the Lord of the Rings coming back with power, uh, with that? I mean, with their approach there, um, uh, and other. Uh, fancy, uh, sorry, sorry, fantasy franchises. Do you think this makes sense? Who got the rights to this franchise? Was it Apple? Was it Amazon? No, neither one. Of them. Was it Hulu? Was it Freeform? No, <laughs> neither one. No, it was fucking Seesaw Films. Uh, yeah. not, nothing against Seesaw Films. They're a very good production company. They do slow horses. Yeah, which is great. Um, very, very respected production company. But this was not, you know, a, a big bidding war with studios and streamers. Um, I, I do not. I was never a never ending story kid growing up. Uh, I never, I actually thought the whole thing was kind of fucking annoying. So, um, not really looking forward to whatever they do with this. Best of luck. Uh, yeah. Not a Falcor guy. Not a Falcor guy. <laughs> Casper says, Jeff, you are one of the top journalists in the business. Why wouldn't big companies like IndieWire, Holly Reporter, Variety don't want to work with you? Because I'm mean. I tweet mean things. Uh, the tra- it's because the traffic that I guess I would bring these sites um, is not worth the headache or the, f- the the fear that I would tweet the wrong thing or piss off some advertiser that would then cost them millions. So <laughs> I, I I don't know, but they'd much rather uh, employ um, you know a lot of inferior talent who Ooh. you know. Come on, you don't have to say that. I mean, well, there's a lot of good people at the trades, but there's also yep. a lot of people where it's like, why is this person making twice as much as me to? <laughs> post stories an hour after i do but you're, you're also friends with a couple of them of I course mean, there's some great again great people at the trades but a lot of people out there making money that i don't feel that they deserve but you yeah. know what never counted uh, other people's money i guess that's true that's a fair point and also jeff's had jeff had jeff has been at big uh outlets in the past so it's i've not had like my he, chance yeah, yeah i had my had shot i guess i just blew it 
some things will happen for a reason, man. Maybe you're in where you're supposed to be. Maybe where you're supposed to be. Things are going very well right now for the newsletter. We are three yeah. months ahead of schedule in terms of uh, where I want to be. So See? there you go, everybody. Um, all right, well, let's wrap it up there. Thank you all so much for joining us here for this episode of the Hot Mic. Yeah, ninety minute episode. It's good to have one of those every once in a while. We appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who sent in Streamlabs and Super Jets. Uh, thanks to everybody keeping the chat lively. Please remember to subscribe uh, to the channel. Hit that bell button uh, down there as well so you know when we're dropping these episodes of the Hot Mic and all the episodes of all we do here on the Outlaw Nation. Leave your comments down below if you're watching after we've gone live already. If you want to send some support, so hit that super thanks button or the thanks button and send them some love in that direction as well. Jeff, another fun show. Please let people where they can find you, know where they can find you, and your newsletter, please. TheInsnyder.com Thanks for subscribing, everybody. Um, yeah, not sure there'll be an issue tonight. I'm a little beat, but uh, I'll try to uh, rebound strong tomorrow. There you go. There you go. All right. As for me, at the Roka says on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, the Outlaw Nation on Twitch tomorrow, the Jedi Way. And I'll be going live tomorrow on the Nation. And I'm going to be breaking down this Quiet on the Set documentary that dropped and that 19 minute debacle of a fucking interview that was put up by THR with Dan Schneider that was horrible and may have destroyed the ethics of journalism in hollywood for years to come so come and watch me there live tomorrow probably 5 p.m pt so i'm nice and randy and have a few drinks in me to talk about this on the nation tomorrow until then y'all take care of yourselves be well and we'll talk to you next week with another brand new episode of the hot mic peace